So this booklet is even thicker because it's it's technically got two chapters combined. They're both relating to trigonometry, but chapter four there's a little twist that we that we put to it. So I will I will be focusing on this. And when uh, Mr. Proskin comes in, he's going to focus more on this part, which is a shorter, probably a one-week unit, right? So uh, we kind of split that up a little bit. Okay, so intro to sign law. What is sign law? Right. I'm going to first tell you what you should have learned up until this point and where we're going to go from here. So we have something called primary trig ratios trigonometric ratios, those are the ones you have, you should know by now. And that's when you have a right triangle. Something that looks like that, or something that looks like that, doesn't matter. In either case, you had a right triangle. Okay. Right triangle. And you would have used to solve, you would have used so, ka, toa, right? Sine, right, relates the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite adjacent. If those, if those things don't mean anything to you, you're actually going to be all right, okay? You're going to be all right because we're going to shift to uh, sine law, cosine law. So, so this is kind of like what you should have known. Now we're going to say, hey, what about, you know, the other triangles that aren't right triangles? We call those oblique. Okay, so it could be an obtuse triangle like this. Okay, so this would be an acute triangle because every, every angle in here is less than uh, 90. This would be obtuse. Obtuse is because of that one angle that's bigger than 90, right? Regardless, these are all called oblique. Oblique triangles. They're basically non-right triangles. That's what oblique stands for. Okay. And for those, we're going to need either, either sine law or cosine law, that's it. Those are gonna be your two choices, your two options, sine law, cosine law. So do not use, do not use Sokatoa in this course. And yes, you will sometimes, sometimes you will see a right triangle, but the beauty is that uh, oblique, like sine law, cosine law also takes care of right triangles. It, these two laws can solve any triangle that you can think of. So uh, maybe I will say this. Also solves right triangles. Okay, both of these laws cannot be applied to, um, to right triangles as well. So today I'm going to stick with sine law and then on Monday we're going to do cosine law. So the sign law states this. I'll, I'll start with a diagram. This is your triangle. Okay. And let's call the, the angles A, B, C, even though that's not always going to be the case, but that way we can reference them. So if we have, we use capital letters for the, uh, for the angles and then the side opposite to angle A will be side A opposite to B. I feel like I've already told you this, but here it is again. And I want to say something right off the bat. Sine law, specifically sine law, works in pairs. Okay. So this angle over here, A, that angle is paired up with this side right here. So angle paired up with the side. Then you have B, right? This angle right here. That one is paired up with this side. And 
and you have C, angle C, right, which is paired up with that side. And now I'm going to do the line that connects them, because I do think, but sometimes I used to just do the line, and then students were kind of confused, like, what do you mean by that? But, right, so these, these are connected, right? These are opposite each other. They're across from each other. So the orange, right, this angle here is opposite that side. And then pink is opposite the other side, right? So in pairs, that's how this works. Okay, it's crucial. So what does the sine law state? It states this, that if you were to take sine of angle A, some of you probably already know this, right? Sine of angle A, right? If you took the side across from it like that, like if you were to divide these two values, that is exactly equal to sine of angle B, let's say, over side B, and also equal to sine of C over C. And I, I'm, I intend to prove this law to you, but not right away. You'll first use it, you'll just have to trust me blindly, but then later on I'll prove how, how this works. Why does that work? And it's kind of, it's gonna blow your mind a little bit, but that's what mathematicians love to do. They love to prove why it works, right? So for now, just enjoy the ride, okay? Or you can just flip-flop this, okay, guys? I'm gonna flip it. So you could, if you wanted to, say have the sides on top as long as you stick with one method you can't flip flop right like, so sides need to align up and and angles uh, with their sign right attached with sign you can never just have an angle floating here randomly it always needs to be attached to sign okay you can't just have a random uh, angle there so this is what the sine law basically states. And we're gonna use this property to solve for unknown sides or angles, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show you that this works. Sine law works for both right, right? This is important, it works for both right and oblique triangles. There it is one more time. Let's test this law, shall we? And I want you to round to four decimals. So we're going to go sine of A, right? So sine of 22.7 degrees, right? This, this angle here will be across which side? You travel across and it's going to be 3.74. I should, I should give you a disclaimer first. I used GeoGebra to make this triangle. So this triangle is drawn to scale. It's like exactly what it would measure. If, if you use centimeters, that's what it would be, okay? So, next, let's grab another angle. It does, I'm gonna grab B here. Sine of 101.39 degrees over 9.51, right? This angle is paired up with that side, right? They're always opposites. And then thirdly, sine of 55.9 degrees over uh, which which side is that across 8.03 I want you to figure out <clears throat> what this would give you and then do it for all the other ones um, but one second your calculators may have been used by grade 12s so I need to make sure you have the settings right so grab your calculator at the top here, you should see degree at the very top of your screen. If it says radians, uh, follow what I'm doing, okay? So you grab, you press mode, and um, you want to go to the fourth line where it says yours might be here highlighted in radian. You want to go to degrees and highlight degrees, right? Hit enter on degrees or degree in this case. So radian is for grade 12. We do that next semester. 
So that's a very important or else your answers will not match mine, right? You'll get everything, everything will be off. So let's clear our screen. So I basically go sign, I press sign, and right away a bracket opens. You need to be aware of that. 22.7, close brackets, or else it will confuse. It will take whatever follows and add it to that. You don't want that. 22.7 divided by 3.74. Boom. And write down uh, 1032, right? Four, four decimals. And do that for all the other ones. See what you get. I'll just update my attendance real quick. The same for all of them. Um, 0 0.103. Did you get a 2 here as well if you round it to four decimals? No? Okay, so it might be off a little bit because of because I round it as well, right? I round it but GeoGebra. So this might not be exactly, but if I think if you go to three decimals, it actually would work. So let me just try this here. That's your point. Zero one, right? Okay, got it. And then uh, this one here, sine of 55.9, divided by 8.03. That's 0 0.1031 as well. So very similar, very similar. If we went to three decimals, it would be the same. So uh, slightly off, okay. slightly off, right? But that's because of rounding. But the theorem checks out, right? The theorem checks out and this is as close to the proof as I can get you right now. Uh, I will just again mention, right, we paired everything up. We paired everything up. We paired everything up, right? So it goes in pairs like that. Okay, let's keep going. How do we use this to solve things? Well, here it is. I'll introduce you to the scenarios that you may encounter. Okay, for the sign law to work, you need at least one pair. That's important. See, when my booklets are this thick, they're always going to fall off my table here. Uh, at least one pair. Right? For sign law to work, you need at least one pair. That means that you need a known side and an angle opposite to it. Right? We can use sign law in the following cases. So I will say this. Uh, let's just draw three triangles and they will look exactly the same because it's just for references. Okay. So you have your three triangles. One of the scenarios, one of the scenarios would be where you, let's say there's a pair here. So you know that angle and you know that side and one other angle one other angle, it doesn't matter. I could give you that one, I could give you this one, I'm just gonna check off that one, okay? So this would be angle, angle, side. Don't worry about it too much, okay? Don't worry about it too much. Oops, it spelled something funny, I know. But anyways, close to. Um, I think grade 11 nurse can handle that. So there, there's your pair, right? That's what I wanna highlight. Then there's another one where I'm just going to make a random pair here somewhere. Let's say you have this angle and that side. For sure, this is going to be sine law because you have your pair. So you have your pair. And I would give you one other side. So I could give you this side or that side. It doesn't matter. Okay. This would be side, side, angle. And I purposely spell it like that because it doesn't really matter how you would uh, spell it, but I spell it like that to make sure we don't uh, I don't swear on on my YouTube video. Okay. Uh, then you have the this is the one that you won't see right away. You have two angles anywhere. Let's let's do these two here. You have angle angle, and you have the side in between them. This is what it, well, this is where I would say yes, it, 
the order matters, right? You have angle, angle, and the side in between them, okay? So that this is where what I call the hidden pair. I will call that the hidden pair. That's the couple that hasn't announced it yet, right? They're not holding hands in the hallway. Still like on the, on the down low, right? Nobody, I mean, it's known, but not, not obvious. It's not obvious, right? So here, what you need to do is you need to find the third angle, right? Find third angle using sum of triangles equal to 180. And then I'm going to introduce that, that uh, so technically they're giving you three angles, guys, if they give you two, right? So now you can say, hey, I know this, and therefore you have a pair. Okay. So these are the instances, and what do they have in common? If you forget anything about the AAS or whatever, if you forget those letters, focus on... Am I able to, do I see a pair like that? Okay. That is giveaway for sine law. If you don't have a pair, it's gonna be cosine law. That's already what I'm kind of trying to hint towards, okay? So let's keep uh, going here. We're about to solve, so don't despair. Uh, recall, this should help you determine if your answer is reasonable. The largest angle will be across the longest side. Therefore, the smallest angle will be across the shortest side. And it goes without saying, the middle angle, like the one that's in between the largest and the smallest, will have the middle side uh, across from it, right? But just remember this, if you do the math and all of a sudden the biggest angle has the shortest side, like when you calculate it, it something is off. Right? You, you made a mistake. Go back to the drawing board and start again. Draw and label the following triangle. And I tell you here, lowercase for side lengths, uppercase for uh, angles. So if it says uh, draw DEF, triangle DEF, and there's an angle, here's a side, an angle, and another side. This is how I want you to do it. Just draw your triangle like this. I don't care if it's drawn to scale because quite frankly, you'll just draw it in order to have to know what you're solving for so you start on any corner i start here and i go def i go clockwise right def in that order angle d now i know 60 degrees right uh, what i made a mistake this is supposed to be f here otherwise you've got two d's right so f is 50 Side D is a cross angle D, and I would expect you to know that, so that's 5.2 centimeters. Side F, right, F is over here, so F would be 8.3 centimeters. And so in this case, all you, you could solve for that third angle and still needed to solve for this last side here, okay? I'll tell you one more thing. It's not in the notes, but a triangle needs at least three things for you to be able to solve it. You need to have three pieces of information. There's three sides, three angles, right? So six in total. You need three of them to get started. The only triangle that we cannot solve is one that has angle, angle, angle. Like if you know all three angles, cannot solve it, okay? But you probably won't encounter that here because we can't solve it. I might ask you on a test if you can, or which law can you use to solve this triangle, you should remember these words like, oh, all angles are given. I cannot solve it. I, I need at least one side. Applying the sine law to sides. This is solving for sides only on this page. Okay? I will do one. Then you will do one. Okay? So here we go. I determine the length of side B. So some are very straightforward, some not so much. So here I, I see, hey, there's that angle. And if I travel across from it, I've got that whole side length there. That is what I call a pair, okay? Pair, therefore, 
sign law needs to be used. So what that tells you is that for sure, your setup will be like this. Sign with something underneath it, right? Equals sign with something underneath it, guaranteed. And so you take sine of the angle, which is 62 degrees, over 4.5 meters. Let's write down our units so we know that we're doing this right. And watch this carefully. Which one is it asking me for? It's asking me for this side here. So let's put B there and a question mark. That's what it's asking me for. In order to solve for this side, let's put B here. That's going to be the side that I'm trying to find. I need what angle across, which angle do I need to solve for this side? I, I emphasize that it goes in opposites, right? I need this angle here. I need to input that angle in order to solve for the side across from it. It's not given to me, but I've got two angles, right? So let's, let's find angle B is going to be 180 minus 38 minus 62. And that is 80 degrees. Okay. Important, not the final answer, but it is important. So I'm going to take that 80 and insert that into the triangle so you can see. Right, that's right there. And it's that one that I'm going to use and put in there. Sign of 80 it wasn't there at the beginning. I just had to do a little bit of working around it to solve for it. And maybe I should stop here and just just make you make you understand because you saw three two equal signs, right? Sign law states this. How, where's the second equal sign, Mr. Dirksen? Because that's the sign law. This is just saying that this is true, but we only ever you know, pair up, like we, this will be the pair you know, and this will be the other side of which you will know either the side length or the angle, right? But you don't, you, you never use this whole thing at once. It's just saying this is true for, for any triangle, okay? And knowing that helps us solve for the unknown. So B is here. So just like before, you go to the side where your variable is, you start with this number, because sine of 80 is a number. You cross multiply and you divide. This is not showing your work. This is just helping you to uh, realize what needs to happen. So B is equal to 4.5 times sine of 80. So the key is that you multiply these two across like that. And then we divide by sine of 62. So Grab your calculator and make sure you know how to type this in. 4.5 times sine of 80, close the bracket, divided by sine of 62, close bracket. And that is 5.02 and we are in meters, right? That's your final answer. And you're done. Okay. I want. I would like to do an aside. One more try. Let's say. Let's let's uh, cut this off here. And we say solve for side A. What if the question says, "Hey." This triangle here, solve for side A, how would you do that? <clears throat> I'll tell you one, I'll tell you what I would always recommend. Start with the pair you used way at the beginning. So this pair, I'm gonna use that again. Sine of 62 over 4.5 meters equals 
if I want side A, which is this one here, I must use, follow my pencil, right? I must use that angle, right? That's going to be, which gives me, so I'm going to go sine of 38 over A like that. So I don't know, should be, should I do this? I'll go orange here. That's the pair and that's the pair uh, right given to me right at the beginning. Okay. So A is going to be found by going 4.5 times sine of 38 divided by sine of 62. So let's see what that is. I could probably just copy paste. I'm just going to copy paste what I did before and just replace the 80 right earlier with the 38. And I get 13.14 meters. Okay. Uh, let's check. Which one is the largest angle? It's 80, right? 80 should have the longest side across from it. Let's check. 5.02. If you compare all three sides, this is the longest side, which is across the largest angle. So things are checking up, right? They're, they're checking out, I should say. Okay, so this was just an aside. Uh, let's make sure it doesn't bleed into the other one. So I want you to solve for side A on that triangle right underneath you there. It may, it may look like you don't have a pair, but see what you can find out before you even solve. What can you find out before you start solving? So give that a try. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, maybe I'll make a note. Um, no pair at first glance. But we have two angles, right? Find third. So make yourself a little note there, right? In case you're studying, it's like, what happened here? It looks all nice. I solved it all. I did pretty good, right? But why, how did you get started? So let's solve for angle C. Angle C is 180 minus 85 minus 30. So sometimes you have to dig a little bit, right, to figure out, and that's 65, 65 degrees, which is important to me. It's an important starting point. So now I have that 65 there, and now I see the pair, okay? And therefore, sine law. So I'm going to start over here, uh, solving for side A. Right, so side A, I'm gonna solve that here. So sine of 65 degrees over 14.5 meters is equal to, if you're solving for A, you better pick the right one. Sine of 30 over side A, right? This is side A. So sine of 30, right? This is angle A right? over side A there. So you go 14.5, right? Multiply these two. Divided by sine of 65. And you get 8 meters exactly. I hope you got that. And then solving for B. Okay, I'm going to cut that here. Solving for side B. I'm, I usually start with the pair that I have, even though technically you just found another pair, right? You know 30 and this is 8. So you could use that one if you wanted to, right? Sine of 30 over 8 and then move on. But there's two problems with that. You round it and it could be wrong. And now it leads into this question. So if you just stick with the original pair, uh, less likelihood of you making a mistake. 
So 85 degrees, and this is B, right? Angle B, like that. Cross multiply. Sine of 65. And that, when you type that in, you should get 15.94 meters. Which, if you, if you think about it, it's the longest side across the largest angle. Way to go. You can tell this is not drawn to scale because 85 is close to 90, right? They should almost be, they should almost look like a 90. So don't think that the diagrams are drawn to scale. All right, let's keep going. We're going to solve for angles. Hey. Are my videos, is my voice muffled sometimes? No? Some students were telling me it's muff, like it's, it's probably when I walk away and I do something here. I think other than that, let me know if there, there are issues. Uh, applying the sine law with angles. So we're going to do, we're going to solve for angles right now. And maybe I should tell you right away, we're going to use sine inverse. I don't know if you remember using that function, but it's almost like the multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing, right? The opposite of sine is sine inverse. Don't say it's sine to the power of negative one. It's not true, right? This, this is just sine inverse. Uh, so I'm going to add a layer to it where you have to graph your own, sketch your own. Triangle XYZ has the following dimensions. Here they are. I can tell you already, I don't know if you see it. You see the pair? Like if there's angle X and side X, that's a pair. So you actually can determine whether or not to use sine law just by looking at it. Um, so watch for that. Sketch the triangle, then calculate the values of angle Z and Y. Oh, I did ask you that here. Uh, a, let's sketch it like a classic, you can draw an upside down triangle, I don't care. Make it be sideways, I don't care. It's all good. Uh, let's, and then go X, Y, Z. And angle X goes here, 34 degrees. Side X would be 6.2 centimeters. And Z is three centimeters which is right here, Z is equal to three centimeters. Let me focus, I feel like it's, I should have HD by now. So uh, this is my pair, right? I don't know if you notice it. I, I see it right there, I saw it earlier. I think you saw it too. So let's, let's see what we can do. You're guaranteed that it's sine law, right? Like that I guarantee you, it's just how are you gonna go about solving what they're asking you for? And sometimes, listen carefully, sometimes it's a slam dunk, like just grab numbers, plug them in, go. Sometimes you're gonna have to solve for stuff before you answer the ultimate question, right? So don't, don't despair if you're stuck, right? So what's, what's up here? Can I solve for angle Y? Because it says Z and Y. So you might say, hey, let's try Y first. Not a good choice because you don't know the side. Right? I would not recommend that. But you do know side Z, which is three centimeters. And do not just do this. I see a lot of that. Oh, it's just Z, right? I'm solving for Z. It's an angle, so it needs sign attached to it. Or you can always think of if sine is over here, then there must be a sign over here. That is your sign that something is wrong. Right? So there we go. That's how we set it up. We treat this as our variable. So we go sine of z. I'm, I'm very picky with notation here. This is my variable. That means that I start here, cross multiply, divide. Okay, so it's 3 times sine of 34 divided by 6.2. 
and I'll save you some work here. So I will, I normally don't like, uh, Mr. Isfeld calls them choo-choo trains. If you've had them as a teacher before, I find that kind of funny, so I, I borrow that. Um, usually we don't like too many equals, right? So especially after this one, you should not have an equal sign here and you plug all of that in, that's not true, right? So I, let's figure out what this is. Three times sine of 34. I hit equals right away, that's my, and then I divide by 6.2. And you get 0 0.27 something. And so I just want you to write down a couple of decimals right, like this and just go dot, dot, dot. It's telling me and the audience, okay, you're using all decimals. It shouldn't be on your final answer, but along the way, that's fine. So watch this. From this line, we're gonna move over to, watch this, Tran transformation is happening right here. Angle Z is equal to, it needs to show up on the other side, but as sine inverse. Like that. That's the proper way of showing your work there. So this is gone. You know what you're really doing, uh, folks? You're taking sine inverse of both sides. It's like taking the root of a square. You, the square cancels out with the root on this side. And on the other side is where you actually take the root, right? So same thing here. Sine inverse cancels with sine on this side. And on this other side, you just have to take sine inverse of, of that number that you computed. So here we go. The grand finale. You go second, you got to press second, and then sign. Right? Second, then sign to, to uh, call inverse, and then copy paste. You go up arrow, hit enter, you close the brackets. It's good practice to do that. You don't have to in this case. And there's your angle, 15.69 degrees. Uh, no, sorry, 70 is that nine, the eight bumps the nine to a 10, which bumps the six to a seven. So this is 15.70 degrees. Angle Z solved. How would we find angle Y? Do another sign law? Too much work. You already have one. Two, you have two angles. Just find the third one using the sum of triangle. Right? So angle Y would be, sorry, I'm drawing here 180. I should know this, right? 34. Fridays are very, you have to pay attention on Fridays and Mondays that I don't make mistakes. Y is 130.30. I use sum of triangle is equal to 1 8. <clears throat> In this case, you couldn't use the sine law to solve for y because you don't have the side length, right? So you kind of had to approach it this way. Okay. How about this? If I asked you to solve for side y, side y, how would we do that? I'm glad you asked. Sine of 34 over 6.2 centimeters. And then I'm going to use sine of what? If I want side y, I better use angle y, correct? So this is 130.30. This is angle y. And I'm running out of space here. Hold on. Let me move the camera. And this is side y. So you're not solving for angle, you're just solving for side. So no sine inverse in this one. So 6.2 times sine of 130.30 divided by sine of 34. Y is equal to... That would be... 
four, six. That's what I get. Let's say on this side, because I just put these, as you solve for missing sides angles, you'll be able to solve for the rest in multiple ways. That's true. So I'll, I'll give you a little for, forecast already. You can, you will only be able to get started with sine law or cosine law, not both. You're going to have to decide at the very beginning. But once you solve for one missing piece, you can actually branch off to either one of them. It's up to you. What's the perimeter? You remember what the perimeter is? I think you do. You just add up all the sides, right? So 3 plus 6.2 plus 8.46. That is 17.66 centimeters in this case. So some uh, later on, I, I'm already telling you we're going to work problems down the road. And uh, so sometimes like how far did this person walk in the forest? There's your answer. That would be distance around. Okay. I'm going to ask you to do question six uh, right now on your own. Watch the heading, right? What does it say? What, what does the title say? Multi-step question. So this won't just be a slam dunk one step and you're done. Try to see what you could do at this point because you actually know how to solve for angle. You know how to solve for sides. So use those tools to figure out everything else. It says solve for side R. You may not be able to do that in one shot. So give it a try, okay? Some of your notation is a bit off, but I fixed it, right? You fixed it. It's all good. Uh, when the angle is too small, like zero point something, most likely not going to be the answer yet. You're probably missing the inverse step. Okay. Um, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to stop talking. I posted everything from page six to 12. Oh my goodness, all of that? Well, I don't know how many you need to do, but I would definitely say you should do a couple more at home after the dust has settled. Right? So homework, page 6 to 12. Uh, you'll encounter a little bit of everything. Okay, that's it. Thank you, guys.